This video is brought to you by Gamersubs. Use code MHB at checkout for 10% off your next order. I've been back in the trophy hunting game for about a year now, and I definitely think my platinum skills have gotten substantially better in that time. Completing games in less time with less stress, I'll be honest, I've been killing it. But you never really know where you're at until you go head to head and compete with someone else, which to be fair, I would never really thought I'd do, but here we are. Both myself and the son of Jazzy are big Mortal Kombat fans. Him more so than me, as I feel I dabble a bit more into other fighters, such as Tekken for instance, where he seems to be locked in on Mortal Kombat. We both platinum Mortal Kombat 11 earlier this year, and with the release of Mortal Kombat 1, we figured since we're both gonna be covering the game anyway, why not race and see just who is top dog. Now this wasn't a race in terms of who can platinum the game first, although just between you and me, that's what I was aiming for also. You know, give him nothing to hang his hat on, or a backup plan in case I lost. No, the race was to see who could complete Mortal Kombat 1 in the least amount of time, and the winner, well we didn't really have any stakes, we're both just super competitive and the proof of the other being better than us was punishment enough. However, I did do my research and I know for a fact that Jazzy was the better player. I mean, that was obvious from his Mortal Kombat 11 video and he knew it as well. Boy was he a cocky son of a bitch. He was trash talking, getting the competitive fires brewing and his chat was making it no mistake I was the underdog in this matchup. Well, funny thing about being an underdog. And you know what underdogs is? It's a hungry dog. Hungry dogs run fast. Of course, being a new release, we had no idea how long Mortal Kombat 1 would take to Platinum, no guides or how-tos to help us. This was straight Hunter v Hunter, figure out your own way to save time kind of battle. However, the catch was we couldn't keep track of the other's progress and couldn't watch each other's streams. This was a blind race, but from the look of the trophy list, it definitely looked easier than Mortal Kombat 11, having both our estimated completion time around the 20 hour mark, and before we knew it, Mortal Kombat 1 was released, and the race began. Be sure to like the video, leave a comment if you want to see more games get the platinum treatment, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and going over to twitch.tv slash mayorhairbear if you want to see these platinum journeys live, or mayorhairbear vods if you can't make the streams. Now first things first, with any fighting game, we need to check out the tutorial. Thankfully, unlike Mortal Kombat 11 that made you complete every tutorial and do these book-worthy combinations, we just need to complete the basic tutorial, and boom, our first trophy. Become a ninja in no time. Complete the basic tutorial. <laughs> With the basics under our belt, it was time to check out Mortal Kombat 1's story, which is where the only real rule we put into place came into effect. No skipping cutscenes. We both wanted to still enjoy the story and not stress about saving time because this can be a big time saver. I mean, there were points in the story where I felt like I hadn't fought in 10 to 15 minutes, so I could see you smashing this out in an hour and a half if you simply do not care about this aspect, but I do. Nothing really to go over here without spoiling the story, so we grab a trophy for getting 50% through the story. A new timeline, trophy number two. Watching the credits, which apparently half the world worked on this game. Oh, credits, how I don't want to watch you. <laughs> Thank you for being a fan. Watch the credits. And for beating the story mode. Do I not get one for just finishing the game? What the f***? I finished the game, guys. Thank fuck. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Gave me a bloody heart attack. <laughs> yeah, one thing I learned very quickly is the trophies in Mortal Kombat 1 have quite the delay on them for some reason. Sometimes just a second or two, sometimes a little longer as I'm sure you'll see as we keep going. But that was my first session with Mortal Kombat 1 done and dusted. Not a big trophy haul admittedly, especially given that it was five and a half hours down the drain now, but race wise I wasn't stressing knowing there's not much time you can save here without skipping the cutscenes. We'd be around the same point and it was the rest of this journey that would be where this race could get interesting. So, once I finally booted up Mortal Kombat 1 again, the game released on a Thursday and Friday nights on my sacred games nights with the boys, we got straight back to work. 
Not so much with a plan, like do this, then this, then this, and more so, let's mix it up and dip our toes into a bit of everything type of approach. But first things first, we need to replay the last chapter of the story mode again for a quick trophy. Who was that? Complete chapter 15 twice. Alright, easy done, we're on the board already. Okay, now we could move on to other modes, and I decided to jump into the towers first. Thankfully, there are no 250 towers here. All we needed to do was complete a tower with 10 different characters, which gives us the opportunity to knock out a lot of trophies within those 10 towers. Very quickly, we knocked out 10,000 total damage to opponents. Titan! Well, that was really easy. Spilt 5,000 pints of blood. Beaten and broken. Spill 5,000 pints of blood. And ultimately beat five classic towers with five different characters. Puppet Master. Complete a classic tower with five different characters. Now because I was streaming this process, I did want to go back and forth between modes to keep things fresh. So even though I had a solid plan for grabbing a lot of trophies in the towers, I went on to test out the invasion mode next. After changing up our player card, of course. Change your call combat card player module. Potentially, maybe we need another background. Yeah, cool. I'd appreciate. I'd appreciate if you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, apparently that's... So, it just was delayed. Uh, change your combat card player module. Just a little slow. <laughs> like some people in the chat. <laughs> the invasion mode is basically a basic Mortal Kombat RPG. You make your way through the different maps, going from tile to tile, doing things from simple fights, endurance fights, boss battles, towers, and some mini games like Test Your Might and Survive. As you make your way through this mode, you'll level up your chosen character and get points to put into various stats to help you battle through the tougher and tougher fights. It's a mode I had a lot of fun with, for now. I'll explain later. And once again, the beginning had those trophies popping. Like seriously, all of these trophies I'm about to go over, I got within the tutorial for Invasion. Used a key to progress into the tutorial area. Abacab. Use a key. <laughs> Completed a weekly quest as well as three daily quests. Yeah, we've done a weekly quest. Maybe you have to claim it to get a trophy. Do we have to do, maybe, wait. Trade an item, no. Where are the weekly stuff? This game is slow as all sh <laughs> Boosting zombies and stuff. What I like to call Demon Alley. <laughs> Complete three daily quests. Dude, that's- I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Bought an item from the shop in Earthrealm. Take and deny. Trade? Okay, that is trading. Alright. Completed five different encounters. So I just kill stuff. Used a talisman as well as forged a talisman. Ultimate power! <laughs> Use a talisman. So crafty. Used ten different cameo characters, which I haven't even explained yet, but I will, trust me. Making friends is easy. Defeat, uh, use 10 different cameo characters. Equipped a relic. Always accessorize. <laughs> Equip a relic. Dude, what are we up to now? 18. Completed a survival encounter, which I was awful at in the beginning. It's embarrassing. Made it out alive. Complete a survival encounter. Cleared an obstruction on the map. Ooh. Make way, I'm coming. And finally, completed the Cage Mansion tutorial, or Invasion tutorial. It has begun. Yeah, the trophies were coming at us fast and I still wasn't done here. Wanting to, at least, make our way through the first world before moving on to other things. So once again, it was here we grabbed the trophies for using a talisman ten times. I don't know 
what that is. Talismania. Use a talisman ten times. <laughs> Perform ten different cameo fatalities, which I've been doing a lot of in the towers as well. Dang nails comedy. Annihilation. Perform ten different cameo fatalities. Okay. We like that. Completed 25 unique encounters, which I'm not really sure what that means. I think it's just make your way through 25 tiles. Dude. Adventure time! 25 unique encounters. Recharge a talisman. Running on empty. Recharge a talisman. So hard. <laughs> Defeat a mini boss in invasions, which is just a fight that has two rounds instead of one. Maybe a little more block heavy. We almost got him. Oh, not so big now, are you? Defeat a mini boss in invasions. Okay, that was a mini boss. That's why we had to fight him a few times. And reach level five. Hey, level five. Let's go. Feeling stronger. Well, we're 51% of the way done. Now, obviously, I wish there was more of a tail to go along with these trophies because, you know, content. But hey, it's a race and I was loving how quickly we were smashing through this list. But it was time to take a break from invasions and suss out Mortal Kombat 1's other offerings. We went to the shrine to burn through 10,000 coins, basically this game's version of the crypt, which is pretty lame, I won't lie, and doesn't really net you anything worthwhile, but you know, trophy. Give a coin. Spent 10,000 coins on the shrine. And then we moved on to the online, where I would attempt to dethrone a king in King of the Hill. This one took me some time because I'm just an average Mortal Kombat player. And being an early adopter of the game also meant a lot of the casual players hadn't gotten the game yet. I tried and tried, got closer and closer, and then farther away, until someone in chat asked if I wanted to test if you can grab this trophy in a private match. I said sure, why not? Because I really felt like this could be a big time waster on my behalf. Yeah, I'm assuming maybe you can't do it in private as well. Oh, hang on. Dethrone a king. All right, cool. It worked. And it worked. Yes, it's cheesy, but again, I'm on the clock here. I need to be smart with my time, which is also why I used that time to perform a taunt without being interrupted in an online match here as well. Hey, total disrespect. Thanks, mate. But with my online confidence down a bit, I decided to finish off the five remaining tower endings I needed to reach 10. And since we're using different characters and cameos, I figured it was a good time to grab those 20 different fatalities. This one in my head sounded trickier than it actually is, and same with the 10 different brutalities. I figured since there is a separate trophy for the cameo fatalities, they wouldn't count towards the 20. And the only way to unlock more fatalities and brutalities is to level up your characters, which takes time. Luckily for me, they do count, meaning if you do 10 main character and 10 cameo fatalities, you'll get the trophy. Deadly Assassin. Perform 20 different fatalities. I also unlocked the 10 different brutalities trophy, I think for simply using the uppercut one with 10 different characters. Again, I thought this would take a grind, but I was happily surprised. Carnage. Oh, that wasn't a different brutality. It was just a different character. But we take those. We f***ing take those. <laughs> and finally, we finished our 10th tower, got our 10th ending, and unlocked the final tower-based trophy. Outside of one, I'll get to later. Definitely. Ooh, happy endings. Unlock 10 tower endings. With all we'd done so far, I'd finally amassed enough seasonal currency to buy some nice character skins from the shop, ultimately spending 10k for a trophy. Which is successful. Big spender. Spent 10,000 seasonal currency. And with my new swag, I finally decided to go into the combat league and give Mortal Kombat ranked a go. Now again, I'm not a great Mortal Kombat player, and honestly, I don't enjoy many ranked modes period. My palms get sweaty, my heart starts racing, it's usually just a bit much for your boy. But we needed to complete five sets, first to three wins. We didn't need to win, which was great, but hey, I am competitive, so I didn't want to get absolutely smacked around, especially in front of an audience. We might do one more and then I need to, I definitely need to stop, because I, <laughs> this is, this stresses me out for no reason, like we don't have to win. It just looks better if we do win. 
So despite my palms sweating, my heart absolutely pumping to the point my hands were shaking, we were winning these sets, which was surprising to me because knowing I was on the clock, my only experience with this roster was playing them in the campaign or the towers. I picked Liu Kang for my main in this race simply because I liked the way his basic attacks and special combos felt and just went with him. But practice and min-maxing, I hadn't done any of it. So to be winning these ranked games when very few casuals are playing, I don't know the ins and outs of my character let alone anyone else, took me by surprise. This ranked mode being first of three wins instead of best of three gives you a lot of opportunity to figure out how your opponent wants to play and figure out a game plan to stop that. I had a lot of fun here. Ultimately I got smacked in my fifth set, but I went four and one, had a good time, unlocked a trophy, but I'll probably never touch this mode again because as I said, not good for my health. A lot of trophies since you left. Contender! Play five combat league sets. Cool. Alright, don't have to bother with that anymore. Four out of four out of five I'll take. Here's where I can't tell if I really didn't plan dipping my toe into different modes well enough or there's just a lot of invasion based trophies but all we had left trophy wise was in that mode so off we went back to invasion. At this point I'd been live for about six and a half hours. It was 4am so really all I wanted to do for the rest of the stream was finish the first world and go to bed. But that doesn't mean we didn't keep that trophy train rolling because before we ended stream we unlocked a secret fight. Took a while to get one of these but after this they seemed to pop up everywhere. Oh, secret fight! Found you! There's a trophy! Equipped three different relics. Do I have to go into combat with three different relics? Or is it just slow? I answered my own question. <laughs> Survived an ambush, which again took a minute to get our first, but after that, they were a little too plentiful. Stop hiding. Survive an ambush. All right, that's the random encounters, I think, done. Beat a major boss in Invasion, which every world ends with a boss fight. A three round slugfest that does test your abilities in less than fair means. I mean, they have arena modifiers, their attacks are prioritized, meaning you can't really get any combos off. You have to not take too much damage on their survival phase and straight armor that means you can't do damage to them until it's broken to finish it off. These fights can feel a little BS, but hey, still not too bad. Who the boss? Defeat a major boss in invasions. And we used 10 single use items to round out our second stream of Mortal Kombat 1. Um, there is no knowledge that is not power. Use 10 single use items. Jumping from 4 trophies to 40 in a single stream and only about 12 hours deep at this point, I was definitely feeling myself after this one. I can't lie, at this rate I was certain we'd grab the platinum in the next stream potentially. We went live again the next day, one thing was on my mind finish the invasion mode and see what's left after that. And again, whilst we didn't unlock too many more trophies this time, mainly due to maintenance being performed midstream, we did finish the invasion mode along the way unlocking trophies for buying an item from an outworld shop. Where's Blanche? Trade for an item from an outworld shop. All right, first trophy off the book. Reaching level 10. All right, we're not getting a trophy here. It's probably delayed as again, again as usual. This one is delayed. Thank you, Murto. I appreciate you. <laughs> there we go. Unstoppable. Reached level 10. Completed five unique test your might encounters, which didn't seem like five and more like 15, but it unlocked at least. All right, test your might. Maybe this will be the last one. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> test your might. Sake. Biggest BS trophy. Reach level 20. Still, okay, juggernaut. And beat the final boss of an invasion season. Yes, season. This is a missable trophy if you don't complete the invasion mode before a season ends and you'll start from the start, so get it done. If that is the final okay. boss, which would be strange. To... Okay, it was, vanquished. <laughs> Defeat the final boss of an invasion season. 
But this all took me about 4 hours to complete, taking our total time to 16 hours, but it was here the problems became very apparent. You see, after all we'd done so far, using mainly the same cameo fighter throughout, we still hadn't reached level 15 with said fighter, or mastery, and we needed to get 5 of these cameos to level 15. I was at a loss here, how the hell can I do this without grinding for tens and tens of hours? I needed time to think, which is when I sort of just loaded up the practice mode and sat there for an hour for a trophy. It was in that hour where I knew that the most XP I was getting was in the invasion mode. I knew fatalities gave you a decent amount of XP, but brutalities gave you more, and I figured flawless victories also couldn't hurt. So, what I did, and I did this for around 12 or so hours, was I loaded into the first world of invasion, found this level 1 endurance fight that since I was so high level, I would annihilate the enemies in one punch, aim for a flawless victory and brutality finish, and do that over and over again until we had mastered 5 cameo characters. It doesn't matter if you use the cameo characters or not, do a finisher with them or anything, they don't have to be involved which is baffling to me. But anyway, this 30 to 40 second loop I did for hours and hours. Our first cameo mastery was pretty quick given we were so close anyway. But those other four had me losing my damn mind. It was this fight for 10 plus hours, and again, this is a 30 second fight at most. 10 plus hours of this, and that's the most efficient way. This trophy is straight padding compared to the rest of the trophies on this list, taking nearly as much time to grab everything else as it did to get this single trophy. Thankfully, early on, I could mix it up by visiting the hourly, daily, and weekly towers to try and find a 7 plus floor tower. If there wasn't one, I'd go back to grinding until the towers change and rinse and repeat. The reason you want 7 plus floors is because we needed to get 5 million points on a single gateway tower. You could do it with a 5 floor tower but you need to get a brutality and flawless victory just to get close. Which I did but one mistake and you don't get it. 7 floors all you need to do is grab a brutality in each fight and that 5 million points is yours. Which unfortunately now just left me with these damn cameo masteries. It took me two days of solid grinding to get this done. No mixing it up, no playing different modes, none of it. This was the most time efficient way I could think of, and damn it, if that's what it took to keep my time down in this race, that's what I had to do. My mind was mush by the end, but eventually, after looking at the same Kung Lao, Katana, and Garrus for over 10 hours, it was done. Alrighty, I have been doing this for probably close to 12 to 14 hours at this point in total i don't i don't know actually it feels like i've been here for 50 f years <laughs> here we are i believe if we have a flawless brutality combo we should get the final cameo mastery for such a fun little experience doing this if I wasn't doing this for a race, this trophy might not be so unbearable because I could, you know, take my time and, and whatever, maybe do the online or do some towers and all this sort of stuff. But we are on the clock, so the you want to get it done quick? The competitor says, let's get it done quick. This is the quickest method. All right. Now, the trophies are mad delayed. Hopefully it pops at some point. <laughs> Rollin' with my crew. Complete mastery with five cameo characters. By far the biggest grind in Mortal Kombat 1. Um, I mean, I again, I have no idea how long that actually took me yet. And now I guess we just kind of wait for, for this Titan battle. Um, I'm hoping it comes soon. Could come this season. Could be a seasonal thing, a tower thing. Maybe someone's just not found it yet. Maybe someone's just not found it yet. Or it comes in, worst case, it comes in season two and I have to wait like 50 days or whenever that comes out. But hopefully that is not the case. Yeah, obviously that didn't happen. And now Jazzy and I are just waiting to see who the hell won this platinum race. On the plus side, there is a very slim chance I could be the first in the world to grab this platinum, which would be dope. All right, the day is finally here. Uh, the final trophy has become 
obtainable. So let's. I've, it's been it's been too long. This is it's ridiculous at this point. So let's just get this done, and uh, this is going to be the most satisfying, you know, deletion after a platinum that I've had in some time. I do apologize. My <coughs> voice is going to be a little raspy. That's just because it's really early in the morning, and I just <laughs> I saw this. I was like, okay, I've, I've got to get it done now, and I'm going to be hella rusty because, <laughs> you know, I've not played the games in a long time now. Looks like a Titan fight. Never know. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm already, I'm feeling so rusty. This cannot be the Titan, right? No way. This has to be something else that I'm just doing for no reason. Uh, hang on. <laughs> this has to be it, right? <laughs> okay, so he's a bullsh**. Fight. The problem is, it's been so long, I don't remember what the f I was doing. <laughs> Alright, now I remember, those those attacks do nothing. Alright, that was a pain in the ass, so you actually get a finisher, I reckon. Fatality. Mighty have fallen. And <laughs> completionist, let's go. Oh my lordy. I never want to play this game again. Never again. And just like that, Mortal Kombat 1 was finally done. Now you may have noticed, I didn't really mention the race while I platinumed the game, and that's simply because I knew I'd absolutely blown Jazzy out at this point. Not only did I get the platinum first, but as of writing, my final time was 32 hours, and his time without completing the five cameo masteries yet is sitting at 62 hours. Mate must have been playing with his eyes closed. So we absolutely pantsed him. If only this didn't take a month to finally unlock, I might have been more pumped about it. So after 32 hours in total, and almost 2 months in the making, what did I think of Mortal Kombat 1's Platinum, and the game in general? In terms of the game itself, Mortal Kombat 1 has a lot of things I do like, and a lot I don't. I think the story was great, the fighting feels really responsive, the visuals are phenomenal, and I had a lot of fun with all the modes on offer. My biggest issue with Mortal Kombat 1 though is it doesn't feel like a finished product. This game will get bigger and bigger over time with new content, but the base game package feels bare bones with no crypt, no friendships or babalities or stage fatalities, a roster that feels quite small in size, the cameos are lacking in utility, invasion mode seems to be where all the content lies leaving the other modes to feel underdeveloped. I just don't think this package feels like a proper Mortal Kombat game yet, and that carries through to the trophies as we saw by having to wait so long to unlock one damn trophy. This is a platinum I could easily recommend before the cameo masteries and the titan fights that look to be timed events. Outside of those two trophies, I think this is a great platinum that I had a lot of fun going for, but the end feels like padding to keep players coming back, which after this whole mess, I'm simply not going to do that. As a Mortal Kombat fan, I am let down by Mortal Kombat 1, and I just hope Tekken 8 doesn't pull something like this as well. But hey, at least we annihilated Jazzy in this race. That's something. Thank you all so much for watching. This could have been a banger video if we didn't get screwed around at the end there, but hey, hopefully the video was still a fun watch. Make sure if you did enjoy the video to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoy yourself. Comment below if you want to see any more platinum races or fighting game platinums in the future. Thank you to all my channel members for that extra level of support and special thanks to those in the Bear Club, GNT Puppy, Jackie White, Nugget and Dark Wolf. It really does mean a lot to me. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, go give my socials a follow if you fancy at Mare Hair Bear, join the Discord server to have a chat, go and chuck me a follow on Twitch if you want to see some of these Platinum journeys live, and I'll catch you all in the next video.